Welcome to the Paradigm Shifting Podcast. I'm your host, Binky Bell, and I use this platform to simply share my insight and opinions on topics like motherhood, marriage, and self-improvement. I talk about these topics through the filter of my own experiences, and while I'm not a coach or a leader of any significance, I do hope that some of what I talk about resonates with you and helps you in your expression of modern motherhood. At the Paradigm Shifting Podcast, I'll always advocate that we shed these paradigms that don't serve us, stay growth focused, and above all, just be your own guru. If you enjoy the work I do, I just ask that you share it, maybe like and subscribe. Doing these things helps push my content out so that it can be found more easily by women like us who are on a path of self-improvement. Welcome back to another episode of the Paradigm Shifting Podcast. My name is Binky Bell and I'm glad you're here. Today I want to go over a few reminders for home educators. You see, because we're at the end of August and I know that because of COVID, there are a lot of families making the transition to either homeschooling or their virtual schooling. Some of them, some families I know made a choice, some people had the choice thrust upon them. Um, regardless, switching up your education program is a hard transition. It's always hard. It's bumpy. If you're new to home education or virtual schooling, I have been doing it for a few years, so I want to give you a few reminders to help make this time, this first semester, a little bit easier for you. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have three boys and a little girl, but my three boys have been homeschooled from the beginning. Um, I use the term homeschool. We started out with traditional homeschooling. We bought our own curriculum, we did everything on our own, and we filed as homeschoolers. The last couple years, however, we switched to virtual schooling through Connections Academy. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, Connections Academy, K-12, programs like those, they're public school at home. So we use public education, Um, public curriculum. It's publicly funded. It is public school. You just do it at home. You, the caretaker, the parent, you have a more involved role in your child's education, but your child still has a public school teacher. They meet in a virtual classroom. It's literally public school at home. The school is accredited. They get a diploma if they graduate from there. It's, I mean, I can't stress it enough. People always get it confused. They think that if you're doing things like connections that the education is not as valid as sending them to public school it's public school at home (laughs) that's literally what it is but we've been doing that for a few years so i have done we've even done you know whole life unschooling where there's no curriculum um so i've i've had my toes in a bunch of these different waters and because there are so many families that are now you know, having to to educate their children at home. I really want to remind you of a few things that that people don't talk about, really. Um, These are lessons that you do have to learn on your own, that you'll come to learn as you go through this process. Um, But I hope that you hear my reminders today and you think about them as you go through your education journey at home with your children. So reminder number one, if you are new to educating at home, whether it's homeschooling or virtual schooling, this is something that I stress so much whenever people message me about Connections Academy, whenever they message me about making the transition to homeschooling, your children will have a lot of free time, a lot of free time. And the thing that we forget is whenever our children are sitting in a classroom in a public school environment, there's one teacher and maybe 30 students and everything takes a lot longer because you have to teach the curriculum to the lowest common denominator. So we have to make sure that the children that are a little bit um, behind the learning curve a little bit, we got to teach things a lot of different ways so that all the children who learn a little bit differently have an opportunity to learn these concepts in different ways so they can find the way that resonates with them. This means that things take a lot longer. These lessons take a lot longer to teach because you have to do it a bunch of different ways. Add to that the classroom chatter 
transition periods from one activity to another. If you've done anything with kids, you know that things just take longer. And the more kids you have, the longer it takes, right? So when you remove all of these factors, all of these things that take a bunch of time and you're just teaching your child or you're just using the curriculum that's given to you and you're only working with your child, you're going to go through it much more quickly. So whenever we think of school and making the transition from public school and now we're educating at home, school used to take like eight hours of your child's day. They would be gone away for a large part of the day and now you have your child home and it can be scary because suddenly you feel like your child isn't doing anything because they go through the workbooks maybe, maybe they finish their assignments, things just don't take as long because they don't have to, there's not a bunch of filler space. They're doing the work and then they're done. And all of these things that society kind of put in your mind about kids and too much time, kids and screen time, um, they start to mess with you a little bit and you start to, to wonder if maybe your child needs to be doing more school, more worksheets, reading more books, um, and then you can get into a really unhealthy habit of forcing more and more and more and more work on your child just for the sake of having them work. You've gotta be really comfortable with them having downtime. And having free time is actually a really, really good thing for your child. The boredom that comes with having nothing to do because you're done with your assignments, that is where creativity is born. Let your kids be bored. It's gonna be an awkward transition because they're gonna be used to so much of their time being eaten up during the school day. Now, whenever you're doing things at home, you will have to get used to being around your kids a lot more. Um, I think most of us now, because of COVID, we've been kind of holed up with our family. So those of us who weren't used to it have probably gotten a little bit more used to it. But whenever the school year starts and you're starting your education at home program, whether it's homeschooling or virtual schooling, I really want you to remember that your child will have a bunch of downtime. You're gonna go through your lessons pretty quickly each day and that is okay. It doesn't mean that your child needs to do more. The downtime, the quality time that you get as a family is important. That's just as important as their lessons. And I mean, please remember this, homeschoolers say it all the time, your child is always learning. <laughs> They're always learning. Let them, let them play the video games. Let them learn to make their own video games. Let them make up video games. Let them go play outside. Like these things, they're all learning. Worksheets do not equal education. That's not the only form of education. Okay, so that's my biggest reminder. Please understand your kid's gonna have a lot of downtime and it's okay. I promise you it's okay. Reminder number two, as it pertains to educating at home, specifically if you are doing public school at home, if your public school has started doing virtual schooling, um, it's really important to remember that your child is your child. Um, sometimes we allow the public education system to kind of bully us a little bit right um, beyond what's healthy for our children so if your child is particularly stressed getting a lot of anxiety around school if there's a lot of pressure to do more have more lessons I want you to remember that your child is still your child it is your job to make sure that your child has a safe happy healthy learning environment and if the dynamic of your education system is causing your child to live in a constant state of stress and anxiety, that's something that can be addressed and you have every right to bring it up to your child's teacher. We really forget that we can advocate for the, the safety and the mental health of our children as it pertains to school. We really forget that because we think of, of school as like this big system that, that we have to operate under under all of its rules and regulations, but you can question and challenge those if your child is suffering. You know, I don't think that that education should ever um, be something that's a source of, of extreme stress, especially for really young children. That's not good. 
So this kind of leads me to my third and final reminder. The education system that's best for you and your child is the one that works. The one that actually works. You know, we forget that these things don't have to be a huge source of stress. So if you are finding yourself fighting your child every step of the way, something is not working and we can't force it. We can't force it. We can't force education in a way that makes children resent learning. Because if you're miserable and the child is miserable and the teacher is miserable, who's being served by that? Who is it helping? It's not helping anybody. So it's okay to evaluate and reevaluate and keep changing what you're doing. In fact, I'd say it's necessary. It's not just okay, it's necessary. You have to find what actually works for you and your child. Um, if home education is new to you, you are going to get to know your child on a completely different level. You're going to know them much more intimately because you're going to know specifically the ways in which they learn, what resonates with them and what doesn't. You know, it, it, math is, is a perfect example of this because there's a lot of different ways to teach simple math concepts, but only certain ones register and make sense for certain people. And once you start to figure out how your child learns best, that's when things really change and that's when things become much more easy. Things flow more easily, but there is a learning curve that, that goes with that. So my biggest advice is do what actually works for you and your family. You are not tied to a specific model of education. Education happens in hundreds of forms. It's different, it's personal, it's intimate, and it can be a source of great joy for your, you and your family. It can be a really great bonding experience if you allow it to be. So again, the best form of education is the one that works for you and your family. So I hope that whatever choice you made, I hope that you feel confident in it. And if you don't, I hope that you can find the courage to adjust what needs to be changed because I really, uh, my heart breaks for people who, who stress so much about, about their child's education. Um, you know, whenever I hear these stories of parents having to sit at their table with their kid for hours and hours and hours going over the same math concepts, I mean, who would want that? Nobody wants that. And I'm telling you, you have permission to not do that. Of course, with that, if you make the choice to not fight those fights, you have to put in a little bit of work and find out what works for your family, but it's possible. Um, and I'm always here to answer questions. If you have any questions about home education, I am not an education expert. I'm not a teacher. I am just someone who homeschools. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. But I wanted to put these reminders out there for anybody who needs them because like I said, this transition, so many people transitioning to home education uh, is very difficult and pile onto that finan the financial instability, maybe health insecurity because of the pandemic that's going on. There's a lot of things going on, so it's okay if you don't get it right away. It's okay if it's challenging. You are in charge of your family you set the tone for your family. So if you need a break, if your school day lasts two hours, that's fine. If that's what you need to stay happy and stay productive in education, that's so much better than spending five hours fighting with your child and deteriorating your relationship with them. You have full permission to be completely in control of your child's education, regardless of what model you choose. So I hope that everything's working out for you. and. Like I said, if you have questions, if you just want to talk, I'm here. Hit me up. Come to my Instagram. Let me know. Share this episode if you think maybe somebody can benefit from it. That would be helpful to me. Like I said, every time you share, click, like, subscribe, follow, any of those things, it helps push my content out to other women who, like us, are focused on growth and want to be the best versions of ourselves as possible. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you in the next episode.